Well, good afternoon, traders. And it's been a very, very interesting week in terms of how um, politics and economic data and central bank speaks have influenced financial markets, as always is. Um, but just to set the scene for, for, for how we, um, you know, what's happened and, and how we can use that as a platform into, into the next into the new week. You know, obviously, one of the big key thematics has been what's happening in the pound. Um, no one's really been buying the pound at all. There's no reason to. There's just such little clarity about the UK economy going forward um, that no one wants to buy the pound. When a pound becomes a political or currency becomes a political currency, you get these kind of big moves playing forward. Economics don't really really matter. It's about what the economy could look like uh, you know, in 18 to 24 months time. And, and right now, there's just such poor visibility around what's happening there. You know, we now know that, uh, that Boris Johnson has and, and, and the Tory party have a one seat advantage in Parliament. So if a no confidence vote is pulled, um, but when summer recess comes through, um, that you know, it, it is looking more and more likely that we're going to see a general election at some stage fairly soon. And how can you buy the pound with any kind of conviction in that situation? So we have seen a, a, a you know a very poor week for the pound, specifically against the yen. Pound yen has has come off about 3.1% for for the week, and that's been your best performing currency if you short that currency. That's where you've basically got the best bang for your buck in G10 this week. So we continue to what's quite happening in in the pound as we go into the new week. You know they've got the UK GDP numbers, but you know backward. Looking, it's really, as I say, what about what's going to happen with the pound going forward in, into the new year? And actually, if we have a look at this table here, which you know we, we can see uh, variants of sort of realised volatility metrics, things like average true range, where Bollinger Bands are, you can see I've got a number of pound crosses here, but the average true range about 82 points. So I tend to look more at what's happening implied volatility. We're using the options market to tell us what they think about where we've been and given the event risk that we've got over the next week, we've got weekly options here, you know, what are the expected moves? And if you have a look at cable, you can see and at the money, um, implied volatility at 7.75%. Now, we like to put context, context around that implied volatility, the, the expectations of where price could move over the coming week. And you can see that sitting at the second, 22nd percentile. So, you know, even though cable uh, has been having some big moves, the implied volatility on the week going forward uh, is actually not particularly high. It's, it's in line with what we're seeing across the other G10 pairs. And actually, if you have a look at that, um, and we use a, a straddle price, um, you can basically see that the market's looking for that to, to sort of trade in a range of 92.14 down to 90.56. We can take our, our level of confidence out and, and, and you know, use strangle prices and, and look at 10 deltas and just get a sense of, of extreme moves. If you have a look at where the markets are pricing that, you can see on an extreme move, the market's saying probably at most we're likely to get next week uh, cable trading up to 122.28 and then on an extreme downside move, we're probably capped at around 119. 41. We can certainly go on about how these options markets make these prices, but we're using a 10 delta, so the probability of those, those options on the week becoming in the money are very low. Um, but that's an extreme move, and that's what the market said. They've had a look at all the forward-looking data and said this is the extreme move on the week. So we use this as a kind of guide um, both on the, uh, on the, on the straddle the, uh, and also on the strangle pricing, just to understand the kind of risk that we can take on throughout the week, whether our EA is going to work in a lower implied volatility market. And that's the kind of moves that the market's looking for. So on the week, you know, the market is looking for effectively for cable to trade up or down from the current spot price, about 122 points. We could go into the big issue, which has really kicked off now and, and, and become a market concern, is the deteriorating relationship again between the US and China. Um, you know, that had was, was certainly on the radar, but I think the timing has caught people by surprise that he's put this 10% tariffs uh, on, on the remaining basket of 300 billion goods going to the US. Now, that is a consumer-based uh, basket of goods. It's going gonna, it's gonna to represent a bigger tax to the, to the US economy and to the US people at a time when consumption is pretty strong. Consumption as part of the recent GEP print was, was actually pretty good, um, over 4%. So, you know, this is going to be a tax. Now, the question we've got is what happens to dollar C&H? That, that, that cross will have to be on your radar as we go through the new week. It's become very much the epicenter of, uh, of currency traders' minds again. As you can see from the daily chart here, you know, we have started to see the dollar moving up against the, the CNH, the offshore yuan. If the PBOC and the Chinese authorities decide that this tax of 10% they're going to have needs to be offset by currency weakness so that the US importers get higher purchasing power, and you're seeing that dollar CNH already at the top end of its 12-month trading range, do we get a break of this 696? Do we get a move into 7 on that 7 handle? And if we get a breakthrough in there, will we see higher volatility playing through in financial markets? That's definitely something you've got to watch.
throughout this week. Will we see a higher correlation between dollar CNH and Aussie dollar? Will we see a higher correlation between the CNH and the euro as well? Because we know Europe is a big transactional partner with the Chinese. Now, as we go through the new week, I think it's interesting just to have a look at the event risk in China. Um, we do have on Thursday the trade balance numbers. What will those numbers be to China? What will the trade day to there? Something Donald Trump will probably be looking at quite closely. I'm not going to talk about the consensus with that because it's an absolute lottery. No one really ever gets it anywhere near the money. You've got the CN, CNH number or the CNY number that gets reported at a slightly different time from the US dollar number. So it's very difficult. We, we, we kind of find the numbers from China in those trade data. We sort of um and ah what it all means and then we sort of make, we make a play on that. On Friday as well, we get the CPI numbers and the PPI numbers. The PPI numbers, the business inputs, uh, are expected to go into deflation. We're expecting to see that down 0.1 of a percent on the month. But it's the dollar CNH cross, I think, which is going to get much more attention. The dollar in itself, I think, is a very interesting one. There's been calls that the dollar's too strong. Perhaps it's going to be one of the biggest risks to the global economy going forward, especially the emer emerging market side, where, of course, they've built up this massive pool of, of US dollar de debt de 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 denominated liabilities. And so that dollar strength is obviously exasperating that, that debt pool. Um, so we are watching that. If you have a look at it now, and I, I will say that I'm doing this video pre non-farm payrolls number where the market's looking for 165 on that. Um, you know, what is going to be the data that's going to drive the dollar this week? And does it play into this into this US dollar strengthening story? Now, Monday, the ISM services numbers come out. The market's expecting a slight improvement with that index going up to 55.5 from uh, 55.1. Yeah, look, it's an important number. The service number, service sector of the US economy is the big, big driver um, of that GDP growth. But, uh, you know, going over the last sort of five of these releases, we haven't seen this being much of an influence on markets. Uh, we've got the jolts report later in the week. But again, you know, it's a pretty quiet week after the blockbuster week that we saw last week. Um, data is pretty on the light side. We do have Jamie Bullard speaking early for us here in Australia, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. Uh, of course, he was one of those who was advocating for a 25 basis point cut. So I'm not sure we're necessarily going to hear too much from James Bullard. Charles Evans, the Chicago Fed president, will be speaking uh, later in the week. But again, you know, he's speaking in a, uh, a brief media uh, summit. So it's not really sure that we're going to hear too much about financial markets. So it's going to be a, bit of a pre pretty quiet week in terms of the data side of things. We do have our chart eyes on, this di um, on, 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 on the daily chart of the dollar index. We've got our eyes firmly on what's happening in euro dollar as we go through the new week as well. It's still trading at this point below that that pivot at sort of that support level around sort of 111.02 up to 111.07 if it can hold that level and the dollar doesn't strengthen uh, doesn't move too much then you know I think we're going to attract a few sellers coming through um, we are seeing though because of these trade tensions um, uh, you know, a, a, a nice bid that's come back into the front end of the U.S. Treasury curve. That's obviously weakened dollar yen. Uh, the implied uh, chance of a September rate cut from the market now, if we look at Fed funds pricing, is around 95%. The question as we go through the new week and into this is, will traders continue to bet this to the point where you're going to get 100% priced in and they start looking at future contracts, say November or December, and start pricing in a chance that if we get a cut then, do we get more? And that's going to probably put some downside pressure on dollar, uh, dollar yen, something we are Watching. Aussie dollar is an interesting one. Have a look at the, the implied uh, volatility we're seeing in, in Aussie dollar. Um, 8.09 as we go through the new week. The market's had a chance to look at everything that we've got going forward. Obviously, the trade tensions that are sort of brewing at the moment. What happens with dollar CNH? We've got implied volatility there on the weekly at, um, up at uh, 8.09, 8.09%. 8 That's in the 42nd percentile. So it's not massively elevated, but it's started rising, as you would imagine, given this sort of backdrop. And we've got the VIX now trading around 17, 18 percent as well. The implied move, if we use a 68.2% level of confidence, and again, we're using the, uh, the, the, the straddle pricing for that, this is a level that people can actually trade volatility on. Uh, the market's saying with a level of 68.2% level of confidence that we should trade no lower than 68.07 up to 68.73. Um, it's just a little bit lower than what we're seeing from, from realised volatility with the Bollinger Bands. We can take it out to, uh, to the 10 deltas to get a, a much more extreme view of where the, the outlier in price may go. And you can see that the market's saying that probably throughout this week, knowing what we know, the Aussie dollar probably won't get any higher than 69.14 and it won't get any lower than 66.90. So again, just using this for our risk management, how much risk are we going to take on and our position sizing accordingly to that. Now, in terms of the data in Australia, uh, if you are running those Aussie dollar positions, 
do keep in mind that on Tuesday we get the RBA announcement. So, you know, um, implied volatility has picked up into that, but we're not expecting, um, you know, anything too blockbuster from this. Of course, they've cut 50 basis points, two increments in the last two, two meetings. We're not expecting anything major from that point. As we go into the back end of the week, though, I think we will start seeing a bit more information, which, which analysts will be looking at very closely. Uh, we do know that Dr. Lowe, the RBA governor, will be speaking in his, uh, uh, in his semi-annual testimony to the committee. And we also get the statement of monetary policy as well, where they may look to change some and tweak their inflation and growth forecasts as well. You know, to the extent, what will that language look like and how will that affect the Australian dollar as we go through the week? Uh, certainly the Australian dollar looking pretty heavy at the moment. I think rallies are going to be continue to be sold while we're looking, using this as a proxy around what's happening in um, you know, the trade tensions there as well. Now, if I have a look at Canada as well, um, the Canadian dollar has been, as you can see from the chart here, the best performing currency of 2019. Uh, it's obviously seeing a few more vulnerabilities because the crude price has started coming under pressure. And I think crudes are a really interesting to one to watch at the moment. You know, we are watching if we can see oil continue to gravitate lower down into this sort of 54.72 pivot. Um, if we get a move down there, I think it will continue to weigh on the Nokia and the Canadian dollar, which are obviously very petro-focused uh, in that situation. The, the, the Canadian, uh, Canadian dollar has been the best performing currency this year. Um, you know, up year to date, it's still up about 3.2%, but we are seeing a few sellers kicking in. Uh, as we go through the back end of the week, we are going to get the employment numbers coming through Canada. And of course, that could be an influence of the Canadian dollar. There is no set consensus at this stage, so I can't tell you what the market's implying or what they're expecting there. Uh, but certainly, I think you're going to be thrown around by what's happening in the US crude and Brent price there. So something we are watching throughout the week. But we continue to watch what's happening in, in yields. We continue to watch what's happening in, in dollar CNH. I think they're going to be really interesting one there as well. Uh, will we continue to see a flattening of the curve? And specifically, we're looking at that three month to 10 year curve. Uh, but if we have a look at the table again, you can, you can see that implied volatilities um, and specifically uh, around um, the IV rank uh, just to give us context of where these, of these implied volatilities are relative to their 12-month average, they're still pretty low. Um, Kiwi dollar's probably got the highest one there. Euro sterling pretty low at the moment. Uh, we'll see if we see these ramp up and traders expecting bigger ranges as we go through the week.